So let me get this straight. You're here to talk about shoes? Well, <laughs> I'm here to deliver. Let's talk about the Asics Metaspeed Sky after my first couple of runs. This is a very special shoe. And let's talk about how it's been performing. I have to let you know that I did buy this shoe with my own cold hard earned Canadian Monopoly money. No one's going to tell me what to say about this shoe. I'm going to be brutally honest, especially because it costs 325 Canadian dollars. My girlfriend did yell at me after I hit that buy button, but I did it for you. So if you don't mind, hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. Now, let's get into the video. So the A6 Metaspeed Sky comes in at a super lightweight at 7.3 ounces in a men's size 9. 6.3 ounces in a women's size eight, I believe. If it's wrong, I'll leave it right here. And in my size, size 10 and a half US men's, comes in at a weight of 7.5 ounces, which if you have the Nike Next Percent, it's very comparable to that. I think it's like 0.1 of an ounce lighter for the Next Percent, Next Percent in version one anyway, in my size, size 10 and a half US men's. For the stack height, it's 38 in the heel, 33 in the forefoot for that five millimeter drop, nice and thick exactly how I like my racing shoes. It has a beautiful engineered mesh, super lightweight, super breathable. The midsole is equipped with a carbon fiber plate, but wrapping that carbon fiber plate is that flight foam turbo midsole foam, and it's it's a good one, but again, we'll talk about that in a second here. The Oatsol is that Asics grip rubber and ooh, it grips. It's just like a little tiger claw gripping onto that road and pushing you forward. The flight foam turbo foam is a nylon based foam, so, what that is, is essentially PBAX, but non-brand name. So it's like Kleenex and tissues, that type of thing. So literally they're using a no-name PBAX foam here and it performs pretty much just as well as a normal PBAX based foam. The Flight Foam Turbo Foam mixed with that carbon fiber plate is not a bouncy sensation at all. Let's get that out of the way right now. But what it is, is a nice efficient ride. When I'm out there running in the shoe, it doesn't feel like I'm bouncing to my next step. It doesn't feel like I'm bouncing on a trampoline, but what it does feel like is I'm running very efficiently. And I have to note that if I'm not running efficiently, like if I'm running super sloppily, this shoe feels a little bit awkward. It definitely doesn't feel nice underfoot. And I guess that's not really the point of the shoe. It's not meant to be used at those slower recovery or warm up paces. It's meant to be used at your faster marathon and half marathon, 10K, 5K paces, those faster paces that you're up on your toes. And that doesn't have to be three minute per kilometer pace. It can be whatever your fast is. My fast for me is about five minutes per kilometer to five minutes and 30 seconds per kilometer. So when I'm at those paces, this shoe feels very efficient because I'm landing on that midfoot and transitioning with this nice geometry and it just feels like I'm gliding on butter. It does, it definitely feels smooth. It feels exceptionally smooth and fun to run in. But like I said, those slower paces where you're landing more back here on the heel, I feel like I'm over pronating a bit, not so much as in other shoes, because as we'll get to in a second, the carbon fiber plate is rigid and adds stability, but it definitely feels awkward. And at those slower paces, I felt like my calves were working harder, my hamstrings were working harder, and overall, I was just getting more fatigued. So, and that kind of worries me because when I'm in a half marathon and marathon, I'm gonna fade. I'm not fit enough to continue to press on all that hard in a longer race. But maybe as my fitness comes up, that's when I'll use these shoes for those longer runs. But for right now, I don't think that my legs can take the combination of the firmer flight foam turbo and the carbon fiber plate in this shoe. So let's talk about the carbon fiber plate. It's exceptionally rigid and it does add that little bit more stability to this shoe. Compared to a lot of the other super shoes I've run in, this shoe is much more stable than those other options. And that works for me because I do over pronate quite a bit. But like I said, when I was landing more on the heel here, when I was fading, when I was going slower, running sloppily, just running like an absolute mess, that's when this shoe just it felt a little bit awkward and I was working a bit harder. When I was able to hit those faster paces for me, land on that midfoot, transition to the forefoot with this nice geometry in the midsole, it felt great. In terms of the softness, I have to put it between the Nike Next Percent and the Endorphin Pro. It definitely is more compressive than the Endorphin Pro if you've run in that shoe, but it's not as bouncy and soft as the Nike Next Percent and that Zoom X. The Flight Foam Turbo Foam is a bit more firm, or it might it feel more firm because of the more rigid carbon fiber plate. It's something that I have more testing to do. So I think this midsole will work better for me as I get my fitness up and as I improve my leg strength and get my stride more efficient. But right now where I'm still in that base building phase, it doesn't feel fantastic, but I don't want to take anything away from it because this is an absolutely fantastic midsole. The combination of the carbon fiber plate and the flight foam turbo makes this shoe exceptionally fun to run in and very smooth. But 
my legs just can't handle it right now. The upper is an engineered mesh and it's so breathable. I can literally see you looking through this upper right here. That is crazy, crazy breathable. But honestly, when I first put it on my foot, I was a little bit concerned because it was bunching up in the toe box, laying on my feet, on the top of my feet, kind of rubbing a bit. So I didn't know how it would feel when I was out there running. But when I got running, I didn't notice that at all. It, it was fantastic. And I think it's because they have a little bit of structure through the toe box. So when I'm out there running, it just, it just works. It just works, guys. The heel cup has a little bit of structure, not a whole lot, but we don't really want a whole lot in our racing shoes. The ankle collar is padded and it is pretty soft. It felt fantastic when I was out there running. No rubbing, no heel slippage, felt great. The tongue isn't gusseted, which is fine. It is, again, that engineered mesh, it's super thin, like, it's almost like a, as thin as a piece of paper. And it, it, the tongue is a little bit short. I will mention that. Like I'm using the runner's knot in this shoe. And when I was tying up, my, the laces were sitting on the top of my foot, which kind of feels a little awkward, but I adjusted the tongue and it, I didn't notice the laces when I was out there running. So not a big deal. The laces themselves, they feel kind of cheap, honestly. They kind of an afterthought. And for me, the laces don't really matter because if I don't like laces, that's an easy swap out. So far, the upper guys has been very breathable, very comfortable. The lockdown has been fantastic. Really enjoying what ASICS has done with this upper. And if you do have a bit of a wider foot, I think you'll be fine. My foot is between a narrow and a wide. Like it's not super narrow, it's not super wide. Maybe it's average, I don't know. Maybe I should measure my foot. That might be a little bit of a fun experiment to add a little bit more depth to these reviews. The upper has been a joy to run in, super breathable, especially as it's getting warmer here in Halifax. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to be breathable. That's it. Okay, let's talk about that ASICS grip. So the old sole is ASICS grip and it is super grippy. Absolutely fantastic to run in. I didn't feel like I was gonna slip at all. I ran on Crusher Dust Pass. I even ran on dirt. I ran on anything and this oat sole performed. I had absolutely no issues. The amount of rubber here is fantastic. I think they have little holes here, kind of like honeycombs, and that is great. But one thing I will note is because the oat sole isn't covering the entire thing, I have gotten a few punctures. That's right. I did get a rock literally lodged into the midsole and I had to rip it out, but that's okay. I mean, we kind of have to expect that with these nylon base foams. And yes, nylon base foams are what PBAX is. And it's something that we have to expect is they do wear and they do get cuts quite easily in them, but that doesn't seem to really make a huge difference in terms of the performance. But overall guys, the oat sole has been absolutely fantastic. I've been loving running in it and well, I wish they would put this Oatsol on more of their shoes. So in terms of value, 325 Canadian dollars is kind of what we have to expect to pay for high-end racing shoes, which is a shame. It's an absolute shame, but something we have to deal with, right? So I, I mean, I, I hate to say that it's a good value. It's not a good value. It's average. It's what we have to expect to pay for racing shoes. And that's the harsh reality of being a runner that is obsessed with shoes. You gotta make sure that, uh, you don't go bankrupt because there's gonna be a lot more carbon fiber plated racing shoes coming on the market. We gotta make sure that you get the right one for you. And yes, we're gonna be doing some comparisons with the A6 Metaspeed Sky to the Next Percent, to the Endorphin Pro, to the Hyperion Elite number two, all those good shoes. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for those shoes, and you will get your get my opinion anyway on what would be best for you. I'm enjoying my time running in the A6 Metaspeed Sky, and I think as my fitness progresses, I'll enjoy the shoe even more. Right now, I'm still in my base building phases. I haven't done a whole lot of speed work, so this shoe is kind of hurting my legs just a little bit, but I think as I get more fit, I'll appreciate this shoe that much more. If you're already fit, if you're already an elite runner, getting out there crushing the miles, then I think this shoe would be absolutely fantastic for you. It feels exceptionally smooth underfoot. The Aces grip is exceptionally grippy. The upper is fantastically breathable and comfortable. The lockdown's fantastic. There's not a whole lot negative to say about this shoe. And the only negative things I have to say are because of me being not as fit as I should be. That's totally honest. Anyway, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked the video, and I will catch you on the next one.